Hello and welcome to Stash Chats Live. So my name is Yvette and tonight I'm going to be talking to Loratu who was one of the sewing bees in 2021. Hello, welcome to the live. Hello. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions for Loratu, just drop them in any questions or tell her any comments that you send our way. So yeah, I'm really excited to talk to Loratu about her experience on the bee and since then and also her like general sewing and also her new lingerie supply business. I'm like really interested to hear about. So hopefully we'll have Loratu in the call soon as you will probably know by now the first request doesn't work to get the guest on so that means you always get a little bit of waffle from me so hopefully you don't mind that too much and it also gives everyone else a chance to join as well so hopefully we'll get started in a minute hello Lauren so Lauren was our guest on yesterday I, lo I love how the sewing bee family are all like so supportive of each other it's amazing um yeah that's that's one of the things that um that would motivate me to go on the bee. I think like actually doing the challenges seems absolutely terrifying, <laughs> but having a really tight group of like sewing besties just seems amazing. So I am quite jealous of that. Um, but yeah, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, if you've only just joined, I've already said, um, do put your questions in the box just whenever you feel like it and I'll uh, slip them into the conversation so that we can get all of the answers from Loratu. Yes, do it in response to go on the beat. Everyone I know, especially people that um, don't um, sew, is like, you need to go on the sewing bee. And I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> Hello, Tony. Thank you all for joining us. Um, here we go. I think we've got Loratu in the chat now. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, can you let us know in the chat if you can see and hear both of us? Because I can't see you, Loratu, but I can hear you. Um, so I do feel for you because it's almost like every week I can't see you and we're just going to have to literally just kind of wing it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's fine because the, the video comes in like the end bit when it's saved. So I'll be able to see you when I watch it back. But otherwise, <laughs> I'll just have to. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. No business. Business. <laughs> okay, I'm going Brilliant. to start with some disclaimers. So there's a little person running around the house like a madman. So if we, if you see me literally go, get out, that's why. <laughs> and um, I am had this annoying like cold and cough thing for a couple of weeks. So I'm a little hoarse and I might just start coughing, but I'm fine. And I've got my water all prepared and ready to go. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining us. Hopefully you feel better soon. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's the lovely winter bugs and it's also the problem of having six-year-olds when they cough in your face and pass you their nasty little germs. Yeah. But, you know, we deal with. <laughs> so do you want to just kick us off by telling us about your sewing journey and how you got into sewing? Sure. So I have been sewing, I think it's about 10 years now, been sewing quite well and sewing's always played a big part of my life in terms of I come from a um my parents are Sierra Leonean and I grew up in a kind of uh, a strong Sierra Leonean community and every time we have events like weddings birthdays um we, we tend to have because of the sort of especially the tribe that my mum is from she's it's Yoruba so we tend to have like this matching um cloth and everyone you know before the wedding everyone gets their cloth and you take it to someone who sews and you just generally know loads of people men women who sew and you kind of go and you you know you pick out something you be like i want this and you know some of them adhere to it some of them are just like i know better i will just sew you something <laughs> else and um but um so having garments made for me is something that i was quite used to and so i was just kind of more and more intrigued by um they're getting it done but also by the because um i you know i've always these tailors are always so amazing they're so freehand but they're also so last minute like you just be like it's the day before and you go to seven o'clock and they're like yeah it's still not ready i'm like when is it going to be ready so i thought i'd put myself in a bit more control of my own destiny and i start sewing and also because um you know as many of us my 
body shape is not the body shape of shop, uh, closing shops. I'm not sure whose is. <laughs> and they didn't, you know, fit me. And I wanted clothes that fit. So I was like, well, I'm going to make them. So, and, you know, they started this kind of long term, probably like the longest hobby I've ever had. Um, but yeah, it just kind of stemmed that off. So it's outlasted a lot of others. Amazing. So since you learned to sew, have you been the one who's making all the matching outfits for your family for events? No, because I refuse. <laughs> I point, well, so occasionally, so the only people I ever make clothes for are myself and little one. Done some alterations for a husband. I've made one or two pieces for my mum and my sister and one or two other kids I know, and that's about it. I very much am, I have no problem calling myself a selfish sewer. I just not that interested in sewing for other people and i think it adds a, like a pressure and i think there's also at times you want this immaculate um garment if you're making it for someone else whereas i don't know about you but as a sewer sometimes we know we've got out with things that are not quite finished no one else needs to know we know and um or, you know things that you've just kind of fudged together and um so yeah I, i'm not really interested in the pressure plus also no one ever wants to pay you what it's worth yeah so <laughs> yeah all that work and then they don't appreciate it <laughs> no so i i choose not to so and it's fun and i you know kids, they are, there's the other friend that i've done alterations for because i know that they've like said i'll pay you and i'm just like just buy me bottle of wine it's fine but yeah otherwise no yeah I feel like it's not even about the money. It's just like no. the principle of it. Yeah, and it's a no appreciation of the time because they think it's something that's so quick. And I'm like, no, well, to do it properly, it would actually take me, like, I was having a discussion with, at work the other day about um, someone who was getting their suits altered. And I said, even as something as simple as a hem, you go, a lot of people just think it's just turning it up and wasn't it round. No, it's taking off what's already there, cutting off, pressing it up, doing it properly, if you were doing it really properly, putting in some kick tape or something. So it's, it's not, it's, there's a reason it costs as much as it costs because it's actually quite a bit of work and it's not just a, oh, okay, let me just get my shit out and we're done. Yeah. Mel says, what were your previous hobbies that you had to go out before sewing? Um, so at one point in my life, I was a crocheter, but I haven't done that in years. Um, I do a bit of knitting that comes and goes. Um, there's a jumper that needs sleeves for about two years, coming up two years. Um, it's sitting there, I might actually finish it this year. And um, done a bit of, of paper crafts and all sorts of things. But yeah, this one, you know, even when you have your little lulls, it, you, it's, I find it's quite consistent, the sewing. So that's why I say it's like the longest standing one there was also at times i was very into makeup very into doing stuff on the, the web i mean i'm still very much a, a lover forum and i love surfing the internet to find out stuff but yeah sewing has been the real passion that's kind of lived and lived so that's good awesome so what encouraged you to um apply for the b i've been asking all the bees this this week <laughs> So it's actually funny. So I've been a sh fan of the show for a number of years. I've said I would apply. And they've even, I think, I th a year or two before, I'd even got sort of way halfway through the form and then I was like, oh, I can't be bothered with this. So I, I just left it. And then, you know, 2020 happened and I was sort of sitting there going, uh, you know, uh, watching it. And I thought for once, life's a bit too short so i'd actually sit there and apply and i think it was like near the end of the deadline or something that i finally submitted an application and then lo and behold you know after the interview process um they were calling me up to say you know you're one of our final 12 and i was sort of a bit like oh, okay thanks because i was like baking the little one at the point and i was like oh, okay and i sort of just said to myself i was like oh yeah I'm on. And it was just, it was very surreal and it, it kind of didn't really sink in until, and of course then you can't tell people, which then makes it a bit harder. But uh, I got to tell a few people because obviously when we were filming, when you film all your backstories and because I was um, um, 
I'm a member of the WI and we kind of made that as part of our backstory. So I actually got to sort of tell a few friends, I was like, I need you to help me sit, film something. And then they were like, what? I was like, I'm going to be on the me. And it was, um, it was um, very exciting. So when you were on, was it, that was in 2021. So did you have to stay in a bubble with all the people, your fellow bees? Yes. Yeah, so our, our, our series was shown in April 2021, but we filmed in September 2020. And um, it meant that we all had to sort of stay in a bubble together. So literally the whole, and whereas, you know, people from more recent times and before that, you know, you kind of go down and film the episode every two days and people going home in between. It was very much once you got there, you were there until you were eliminated. And so you could just spend your days, you still have the same type of days off, but you just uh, spend it um, at, uh, where we were living. And the only other people you could see were your other bees because we were in a bubble. So it was absolutely great. We'd go on walks and stuff. Um, and, you know, there was a roof terrace that we used to hang out on because it was like, you know, social distancing, being out in the air. Um, but I always think that's part of why so many of us, I mean, you, you end up really close on the beat anyway. But we were literally just, <laughs> we were the only other like human contact that we had. So it definitely made us um, very close, very quickly. And I, I think is, you know, even more heart wrenching every time someone left. Yeah. So it was just like. Oh. Extra intense experience. Very much so. Because, you know, some of us, so like Fairy and I, we're the ones who had young kids and so some of us away from kids people away from partners parents their junk hope animals they're just the whole general like sort of family life and this was your your family at that point so it was you know it was, it was definitely something so did you have a cover story that you used to like tell people that um what you were doing instead of the bee no because Luckily, because it was the pandemic so no one knew what no one was interested in what anyone was doing because no one was going anywhere so my boss at work knew because i was like oh you know depending on how it like there'll be some days i was working because i was able to work remotely so i said some days i'll be working and some days i won't and so i just had a sort of very non-specific out of office that said i'm away speak to someone else um that i never took off until i was back at work properly and then, um, yeah, very few people knew. So it was actually really funny because then later on, when we did get a, a, announced at that time, we had a sort of WhatsApp group um, from with me and my team. So the day we were announced, I sort of just dropped the picture in and then said, recognise anyone. And so I was like, oh, my God. And then you find out, let's say you find out how many like fans of the bee there are because all these people are like, but I love that show. I'm like, oh, so do I hence why I applied. Did you end up watching the series that you were in? Yes, funnily enough, I watched it. I watched it, that series, and I think I've seen some of the episodes like once. It's, you can't watch it the same again. And, um, you know, it was very weird. I mean, you, you, you want to watch it because you know that it's, you had like two super long days of filming and you know you want to see how that's condensed down into one hour of television um it, yeah so but it was surreal watching it because it was there was also lots of little random things that you knew went on behind the background that didn't even make it and you were really interested into what made it into the edit for example the second week we were making paper bag shorts and i managed to stick my needle my so much get so literally through my finger and that didn't that didn't make it in, even though there was literally me going, oh, <laughs> swearing very loudly. This cameraman going, Rrr! and coming really close, and you know, and the the medic and all the dramas, and I'm like, oh, and then you're like, they never put that in. It was also a really funny part of that same week, um, judging because Raf and I were sitting at the back, and these because of COVID, these doors had to be open the whole time, and these random pigeons came in, and they were like. <laughs> Cooing, they like flew up to the rafters and it's Raph and I noticed them first and we're sort of sitting there looking and like I don't want pigeons like you know kind of pooping on me and it kind of thing everyone else lots of clock on and we're just like watching these random pigeons because then another one joins in and it's just like all these like little funny moments that we had behind the scenes that just made it super fun and it's 
it's weird seeing what gets edited on the TV to versus your own experience. Yeah, they're probably like, we're going to probably have to put in quite a lot of pigeon footage if we're going to do a story about the pigeons. So maybe we'll just... The pigeon footage is not really about... It's not what the same thing is about. It was just... It was funny to us because we're like, there's a pigeon. It was like... It was amazing. It would have been amazing if you'd finished a garment and then it was like getting criticised and then a pigeon just comes and like tunes all over it. Oh. <laughs> well, I think that's partly what Raph and I were worried about. We're a bit like, I hope this pigeon doesn't come and do what it needs, like do what it does on the, um, you know, on the on the on the on the garment. And yeah, you're just kind of watching these pigeons and they were like just sort of flying about in the rafters, but no one else could see it in, at first and then more and more people just kind of were like what the hell is going on oh that's amazing lauren said that she's got similar she had a similar situation on the bee where she somehow dropped her mannequin <laughs> on my <Matthew's> head <laughs> so you'll have to tell that story on friday that doesn't surprise me with those two <laughs> I feel like it's not the same kind of level of sabotage as knocking over someone's plate of cakes on the bake off. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So it's just, um, it's, and it's actually so funny because as, as most people know, there's like, you know, it's a lot of the, it's made by the same company and stuff. And it's like, but I think Sony still really chilled. It's not got, a, there's no real hint of Machiavellian stuff in there <laughs> just yet. We're still being like, oh, loves each other a friend is all friendly and wants to you know and we just all want each other to succeed so yeah it's such a supportive environment i think just in the like sewing community generally it's really nice like that everyone's sort of rooting for each other i mean that's one of the things i really love about the sewing community um i was like giving someone a sort of once one session especially on things like instagram where i think you're definitely a bit more um you curate your 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 community because you know who you follow and yeah. you can easily block who who follows you if they're not you know being nice um but i think there's definitely a good amount of positivity and support and i think you know even just all of us doing these you know these things and we everyone's just always generally rooting for you and it's 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 lovely and i say this is actually you know one of the i think I think that's the other enjoyable part of, of sewing because when you come onto the socials and things like that, people are lovely and people are nice. And when you go to the shows and people see you, people are not nice. They're, don't get me wrong, and everything's there are a few <laughs> questionable people, but I think that's just part of life. Um, but on the whole, it's really positive, so um, that works really well. Yeah, I think as well. Like, um, no, I've lost. Yeah, I've lost what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm usually like that. Oh, no, no, no. And then I go thingy. And then my daughter goes, thingy is not a word, mummy. Like, so do you want to tell us a bit about your sewing stash? Oh, well. So unlike the uh, previous two nights, my sewing stash is not kept in a calyx. <laughs> um, I can't show you most of it because it's actually um, it's in a wardrobe and... It's come down a bit these days, so it's like the you uh, a top and a bottom shelf of a wardrobe, um, full of stuff. I actually this year made a bit more of an effort to kind of work down the stash a little, um, because I was like, I need to stop just randomly oh, skipping stuff. I love these things at one point, and actually, I found that most of them I do still love, so I haven't given them away or sold them or or destashed in any way. Um, but there is, yeah, there's quite a few, um, bits in there and, you know, but I think, you know, I'm getting really on top of it and trying to really sort of, um, combine, like really have some strong plans for them. Um, there's a, I mean, with a lovely help of Stash Hub, cause it's actually kind of forced me to think about, um, putting some garments um together so even recently i managed to pull out a pile of stuff that was a bit like okay these are the first bunch that i'm gonna sew does not stop me from buying more fabric as i even did this week but um it's a nice mixture of the two um and really trying to get that and i think i'm always gonna have a stash as i love to say and as everyone says buying fabric and sewing fabric are two different hobbies yeah so we 
it's just a case of you know curating a slash i think it's just always reviewing it and making sure it still gives you joy yeah because um and i think as you also as you grow as a sewer your tastes do change so when i started sewing there's really a lot of cottons and um i guess um fabrics at like the cheaper end of the, the price point scale and and i think that was absolutely grateful you know what was and my skills at the time but now as i've grown as a sewer um there's definitely um i think more about the blends and the fabric um and you know a little bit more about what i'm going to do with it and how it fits in with my wardrobe and my personality so i think most things are a little bit more um considered now but i am very someone saying if it's dead stock if you don't buy it won't be there exactly and i'm very great believer especially because i do like dead stock but not even just dead stock i find that um a great believer in if you want it get it to that point because if you like it probably a bunch of other people like it and you can't guarantee it will be there yeah definitely so how would you describe your style like what sort of things are mostly in your stash um so i like color but i also like neutrals so i have a lot of black and navy and also like i like sort of like soft pinks as a base color i've got a pair of trousers that i like made in a soft pink that i absolutely love they need they're in a sort of mending pile at the moment and have been there for i want to say about two months but i love things like that um but i also love a, i love a good bold print and bright colors and, and i just actually really do like color and i'll just wear you know uh, um um a lot of different colors i'm trying to think i was trying to think the other day if there's a color that i don't particularly like and i really struggle to think of one because i think i do and i think i'm quite lucky enough that i can wear most shades yeah. so if i like it i'll buy it and i'll just make it work it's something in my wardrobe there's always at least one thing it's going to work with so it's it's i just buy it but i just buy you know <laughs> depending on what it is if i think i might make a dress or something if i think i might make a dress three meters if it's like something like a bottom weight i'll buy two meters because i know two meters will get me either a trouser or a skirt or something and yeah that's kind of you know how i play it so two between two and three meters recently i've been doing a lot of going for two and a half meters and then doing some very um particular pattern tetris to squeeze in the, the satisfying though when you're like yes i got it got it out of way less than the pattern told me to <laughs> so because i'm like i'm gonna mess up your flow of questions i'm keep really team pdf and i've moved into projector sewing and um but i've also kind of moved into like using it on my ipad and kind of taking the pat so i do all my um pattern adjustments digitally and then i'll get a rectangle and put the size of the piece of fabric and i will start playing around with how am i going to squeeze this on all these pattern pieces onto this um piece of fabric and you know what i have succeeded even though there's one i was making um is a closet core crew the, their subscription one it's called the periwinkle dress it was like sort of this um mid-calf dress and i think the thing said about three or three and a half meters i had two and a half meters um of um this um fabric and not only that it was like a check it had stripes or both directions so not only did i squeeze it out of less i still managed to get the path the um, stripes matching across the front because it would have been not so well. and i got everything done and the only thing I had to piece was one of the pockets, like the, the pocket bags that I had to like piece a bit of uh, fabric to. And I was literally, I was like, you know, when you're just kind of left with a small handful of scraps. But I think that's kind of where I really like to go because I don't like, I, I've got so many scraps now and I don't like throwing them away. At the moment, they're in a big, like, um, I made the closet call um, poof, the free pattern, and I shoved them all in there. And the little one's learning to sew, so it's great. She can just go and find fab bits of fabric in there. But I, I just have, I'm one of those people that's like, 
Well, this fits even a pocket bag. Okay, it's staying. And those bits of fabric are getting out of control. So yeah. I'm really <laughs> trying to be very conscious about the amount of fabric I buy and how I do some clever cutting out. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer when you're doing that. I was, um, I've, I'm, so Lauren has got me on the, t you know, the Know Me Patterns, ME2016, the one with the big, and the cut. So I was like, okay, I'm making that. I also decided to make it out of um, the Bargello edit, edits, pink and blue striped fabric. Yeah. But I decided to only buy three meters. I swear that pattern says 3.5 to like four and a half meters. I did some, um, yeah, that one I did some new, real sort of, and those ones I'd printed off because their their PDFs are not as, um, as 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 editable. And I did some, but I did really did a lot of um, cutting on the flat, playing around. And the only thing I had to do, I was making a shorter version anyway was I actually just reduced the sleeve for about two inches um, so that I could fit it on the pattern piece, on the on the fabric. But yeah, it's sitting there waiting to be sewn up now. And I'm pretty like, no, nah, I, I, I've done some, um, I was pleased with that one. Did I do a zip on the poof? Yes, I did. Um, so they just, um, so yeah, I just now every time I've got some scraps, I can just chuck the scraps in. I think when you look at the, um, the, the 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 pattern on the bottom there it's got a, an opening for a zip and you just put a zip in so you can just keep chucking stuff in there so it's a kind of great way i made it out of scraps and then i filled it with scraps yeah there's a great <laughs> it takes like an amazing amount of scraps to like fully it really fit. does you could just keep chucking stuff in there and it gets fuller and fuller and fuller but you can just you can do that whole i'm not quite throwing them away yeah but they're, they're, they're having a use. Yeah, they're like kind of out of your life, but they're not in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, exactly. Uh, exactly. Lauren, she'd love to know more about using your iPad with the PDF patterns. Oh, yeah. So, um, uh, so I use, there's a couple of like bits of software out there you can use on iPad or on your computer that some of them do the, um, that can, you can use them to edit pdfs it is a bit um some patterns are easier than others because it's easier when they're in layers and um some people have locked the patterns and and some haven't but basically um what i do is i could almost like slice the pattern as i would if i was doing a full bust adjustment and rotate the pieces and kind of do all that digitally so that um i then don't have to um cut it and um you know print it and cut it and i can just do that and it saves me space and the other thing that um you know so i use that to do the um the so once i've done that then i do all my little um adjustments i'll try and put something up on my um grid later on but i've also used that to do my at the moment it's my trouser block and my skirt block that i've done i still need to finish my bodice block and actually what i was able to do is take that body that trouser block and overlay it on a um trouser pattern and also make the adjustments for the the, the curve because i um made my trouser block i want to say a couple of years ago i redid it recently and then ever since then whenever i have a trouser pattern i just compare those because i've always needed to do a full bum adjustment or adjust the crotch curve and do that and it just kind of made it so much quicker it means i didn't have to twirl it because i knew if i did it like that it would fit it would be the right length you know you did the back and you did the front and you'd compare the two and make the adjustments and it made life so much easier because these days i must admit only really twirl if it's something new to me or if i'm really not sure but it yeah. does otherwise i just break and i go into the fabric because i was like it'll, it'll be fine but i i tend to sew a lot from the same pattern brands and once i know the block and which you know especially when they have two blocks because i overlap um once i know which block is the best for me i'll just kind of yeah these are my standard adjustments bish bash bosh done great that sounds really handy doing it on the on the tablet and not having to like stick loads of bits of paper every time well yeah because yeah, because I have to make an adjustment on everything. I'm quite large busted, so full bust adjustments, which 
Um, luckily, I learned quite early on in my sewing career that I kind of really needed to. So I always need to make an adjustment on tops. So just learning to do that and kind of, it's, it's a bit, you want to get onto the fun part, which is the sewing, right? <laughs> yeah, a bunch of us always say, even cutting out, I'm like, oh, it feels a drag. So you want to get onto the fun part. So I always try and wait to make things, to get onto the um, quick, I want to get to the sewing parts. So I want to make the alterations part as quick as possible. I want to make the cutting out as quick as possible so I can get to the fun part. Yeah. So do you tend to do like batch cutting or do you do one project at a time? No, I batch cut. So the other day I cut actually two um, garments and then I got two more to cut out in this current batch. So this, is, so this was my... ME 2016 with the Bargello Edit fabric. And then I've also got, this is the Skyline um, blouse by Maison Fauve. So I've cut those two out. Those ones I actually cut out on using paper. I have to cut out, um, I'm going to make a closet core Joe dress in this sort of grey leopard print jacket sort of jacquard um print and then um made them five brooklyn trousers and it's like navy twill so those are like so hopefully i'm gonna get these cut out before the weekend and then i'll start because then it means especially with the darker things i can just do a whole bunch of overlocking all at the same time and i always find it helpful to have more than one project cut out because sometimes when a project's annoying me uh, yeah. I put it down to the side and I've immediately got something else to go on to. I feel like sewing can be like the more sort of chill part of it as well. Like you you need to engage the brain a bit if you're like thinking, do I need to make adjustments to this? And like if you cut it out and you mess it up because you're like tired or something, then it's ruined. But you can always like unpick a bit on sewing. Yeah. So I feel like having a different project to just like go to is really handy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I made this... Um coat um i so my other thing is i love a um sewing pattern magazine so i have a huge pile of birders under my bed i've kind of paused on buying the birders for now because it was getting a bit wild and i have a digital subscription to patronus which is a spanish pattern magazine <laughs> my spanish is nowhere near that good but <laughs> it's got to the point in sewing life it's like oh, i can look at pieces and try and work out where they go um i was making the this coat from the the pattern magazine when i tell you i needed to add on a channel for a, a drawstring on the waist and it goes on the outside i started it it annoyed me i put it down for about two months so a bunch of other things and then went back to it and when i went back to it i got it sorted in one night <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's um, not as bad as you thought it was, but you just still need that break from it. Yeah, and then sometimes it's like, why did I wait so long to do it? So, um, but yeah, it's just, and I think it's it's one of those things, sewing for me is meant to be my hobby. It's the take away the general stress of the day-to-day -day life. So if it's causing me stress, then it's, it's doing something it shouldn't. So... And I don't think it's ever you know, a problem to step away from it and say, you know what, it, today is not the, it's not right now. <laughs> and just kind of move away and go and do something else. And I think, um, unless of course I'm working, I've set myself some crazy deadline because I tend to do that a lot. <laughs> and it's like, sometimes you're about to go out and you're still like finishing a hem. Um, but yeah, otherwise. Yeah, the trying... outfit that you wore for the fabric godmother catwalk at the Stitch show that you were hemming on the train. <laughs> yeah. And there's the one that I was like wearing to my cousin's wedding. It's like on the way I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna be like, no one else will know. I was like, yeah, I've just sewed it. And I went to the wedding and I was still sewing bits. <laughs> and you know what? The dress is sitting in the wardrobe. I still haven't finished it properly. I actually need to get on and do, do that. That's reminded me. I have, do have a big, I wanna say mending fixing pile that I need to get on with, that I haven't, but mm, we shall eventually get on with it. Well, oh, someone, Wolf Mothership says that they rush as well. They said, finished a skirt last night to wear to work today for my birthday. Yeah, I've, so yeah, I've done the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, 
And we sometimes will look at ourselves and say, oh my God, I haven't finished that and I've worn it. Everyone else will be like, oh my God, I can't believe you made that. That looks, you know, great. And then sometimes we'll be, you know, so we're like, oh yeah, but it's not finished. Why are we telling everyone our secrets? Just yeah. be honest and say, um, just be, take the praise and walk away. <laughs> and be like, thanks. <laughs> So do you think about your like lingerie making as part of your sewing hobby or do you think of it as like something separate? No, it's part of my sewing hobby. In fact, that's one of the things, like my literally current piece on the machine, because I think I took a break from the, the making, the cutting out the other day, is a, a bra because I was working on this. Um, I've used this company for various things, but this is a... This, the pattern to me is something I've not used before. So it's, um, this is, I don't know how much we can see. So I have very big bras, lady, <laughs> la ladies and gents, because I'm a big booby lady. Um, I'm making a wireless bra for myself, and this is by Lily Parr Designs. And so, not that you can see it, because, you know, when you sew in all black, you can never see anything. But it's just, you know, I'm just kind of working on um, these bits. So... We've been working, I've been working on the main part of the bra. I've got to add straps and the wings um, some point this week, but it's been fun. And it, yeah, it just kind of feeds into my process as well. So when I'm thinking about a list of coming up with a list of garments, I'm also, if there's a particular um, bra or uh, knickers or something that I want to sew, I'm also thinking about adding that to my list or looking at fabric for those as well. So it's much easier when you um, decide to start up a business and then you actually have lots of supplies in your house. And you're just like... Oh, so do you want to tell me a bit business. about your new lingerie supply business? Like what made you decide to start working on that? Um, so, so I really got into bra making I was a couple of years back now. And it's something that I found um, really interesting. Um, but again, it's one of those things where... Um, there weren't many places that I was finding that was selling the, um, the, the bits, especially in the UK. And, um, you know, even when they were selling it, not everything was necessarily what I wanted. So I was a bit, you know, as umming and ahhing and I kept thinking about it. And I was like, at one point I was just like, I'm just going to go for it. So I just kind of um, started looking at various bits um, that I needed looking at and especially sort of like the laces the laces because i love you know some of the, the the laces and things and the elastics and it was also um looking at again because i'm quite large busted i need generally like a 15 or 18 millimeter and um, width strap and they weren't always the easiest to find so i was like well i'm gonna go out and find them and try and you know and um um, if I'm having trouble, then others must be having trouble and go and supply them. And then also, um, one of the other things I've kind of been a bit, um, I guess, conscious of is that some people do kits and that's great, but I was a bit like, I want a kit that's for me and I don't want someone to pre choose all the colours. So, um, yeah, so then I kind of, you know, I started off with a few bits. And it's slowly been growing and adding a bit more. And, you know, just as a message to how supportive like the sewing community is, I, um, and this is obviously how I met you, um, I help out uh, when at like knitting and stitching and stitch festival, I was helping out on Ethel and Jones stand. And the lovely Louise was like, well, you always come and help me bring some of your stuff. And this was the knitting and stitching show in October. So I just, you know, had a few things, had a little shelf. And it was actually really great to see the interest that people were having in bra making and sort of like, you know, the, I guess also the challenges or speaking to people about what they want or finding out how many, um, how interested they were. And I think as so as we're now making so many things ourselves, you know, why just stop at the things everything yeah. else can see? And we, lots of people wearing the wrong size bra and we talk about how, you know, it's not the greatest fit. So as much as we put into fitting in clothes, we can work on fitting our, 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 our bras as well. So do you have any like recommendations for resources like getting started with bra making or like learning how to fit bras? 
so um yeah i think there are some really good resources out there so you've got um beverly johnson the fairy um i want to say the fairy grandmother that's what she said um who does some really great patterns and and she's based in canada and on what was crafty or whatever she had some classes i'm a real big fan of um lily par designs because she does a really good size range so all the way from like a a cups to like double k um her i like um porcelain designs um she does some really great um jennifer fairbax does some really great patterns in fact she drafted the widow dale for cashmere um someone's asking about online classes i know lily par design does online classes jennifer fairbanks does online classes um and um those are kind of definitely like the three and i also like orange lingerie as well her patterns um but there are quite a few out there i think one of the things that is you know um you have to look at different techniques um different pattern styles and just like you are with regular sewing you need to be open to your the size you are not being the size you're currently buying because you may not already be wearing the right size so um yeah but it, i really learned some things about my body in terms of when i was making the bra and why regular bras don't fit me properly yeah 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 so because i um i've got a pattern but i haven't i've got all the stuff now because i got some extra bits from you as well at the ali pali show mm -hmm. so i've got all the stuff and i've got and ready so i just need to like actually take the plunge and make my first bra but i've come out yeah. such a different size from my ready to wear one so i'm really interested to like see how it goes yeah and i think that's the thing because there's and even amongst all those bra companies that i said even they've got different measuring ways and um but there's some really interesting ones now that kind of get you to measure literally i'm going to start following me get you to measure from like the, the the your crease up to like your the apex and get you to measure the width rather than sitting there thinking about oh this difference between this different and the difference between your full bust and your under bust and it gives you um a lot more options in how you combine your different measurements and and grade them and adjust them to get to something that fits well but it's definitely enlightening to have a well-fitting bra yeah i guess i'm not sure how yeah. to discern what the right online course is since i haven't done any so uh, it is a bit of a thing but i think you need to kind of look around and see and some people have taste the lessons and just kind of get a feel for um, what you need to look at there are also quite a few facebook groups as well who focus on bra sewing so and there's again those things are a kind of um, really good resource on how to get to, you know, and, and we'll give people lots of support to around how to get a well-fitting bra. So it's out there. Again, it's the same community at work. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so do you have anything that you want to show us from your stash or any particular stories you want to tell us? No. Well, my stash. So, um, I think yeah, the stash is all sides. So I've just kind of shown you the kind of key elements that I have um, that I'm working on. Um, but yeah, the stash, if I could show you in another room, it's full of um, all sorts of um, various colours of of fabrics and things. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything in like. It's actually really funny because the sewing that I keep sort of all my sewing stuff in a in a bit of a wardrobe and actually because the shelf broke the other day so i actually have to tidy it up and it's so much tidier than it than it come than it used to be um but yeah i tend to have um quite various things i have lots of zips and i like to keep a couple of bolts of interfacing and various um bits and bobs i just have lots of stuff um shuts up there and i keep all my overlocker and my cover stitch down there and then my sewing machine tends to just permanently live out here um 
and then I did bring up um, a couple of the kind of things that I do like so some of what my next bras will be are going to be I'm loving this absolute um, lemons um, bra making fabric and think so and then there was this one which every lots of people loved in the green and I got in the pink recently and I was just like oh there's lots of like um, I see lots of bras in my future it's just really interesting <laughs> this and then this is where the paper sewing pattern collection lives um, and that's after I got I um, sent out a lot um, I donated a lot to Melanie in the Refugee Project. And I was like, yeah, I have patterns coming out of my ears. This is why I'm team PDF now. <laughs> it's just too much. Because I'm very much, if I see a pattern, I'll just buy it. And I'll just, yeah, I, I like it. I have eased up a bit, though. But I do, you know, I'm a quick buy. Especially when they're PDF, they the pick mic. up no physical space. Sorry? Yeah. Especially if you're subscribed to the magazines as well, you can end up getting tons of patterns through those as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but you know, I'm I'm one of those people. You know, some people love to self draft. I don't. I like the fact that someone's done all the other maths for me. I would rather just adjust and move move on with my life. So if there's something I want, I'll just buy the pattern for it, and um, kind of just you know do it like that and so sort of sew it like that and move on like that and i'll say there's the other thing i've drafted a pattern for and occasionally um and i try not to because i know i tried to find things that are a bit more inclusive um i um do, have graded up a few patterns do i check hashtags before you buy or do you just buy it? um it depends so if it's a pattern that's already been out there for a bit then yeah, I'll check the hashtags and all, or I'll see someone like the ME two zero one six. I've seen lots of people sew it and like it. I was like, okay, I'm buying this one now because I tend not to buy as many big four. I'm very much in. I love an indie pattern, um, but um, some of them I just see on day dot, and I'm like, this day of release, and I love it. I'll buy it. Yeah, I was talking to Lauren about this yesterday about how sometimes like when you first see a pattern you're not that into it because of like the sample that they've made or the fabric they've chosen and then you can see mm -hmm. another version online of what someone else is making like oh well, this is actually a really good pattern and that convinces you to buy yeah. it it really does and i always tell you know people if, when you're becoming a sewer instagram is a great thing because of the hashtags and if you're unsure about a pattern just you know put the hashtag search for the hashtag and you'll generally find that you know, people all sorts of shapes and size you know shapes who will yeah who've sewn that pattern and you can get a really good idea of whether it's going to work for you yeah and it's very it's often very like telling if you look on the hashtag and then all of the people like look one certain way and like your body types like not represented you're like maybe this yeah. sort of doesn't actually suit people that look like me and that's why no one's posted their makes <laughs> or that they haven't really been inclusive in their size range and i think you know i think one of the things is a couple of years back when certain community really pushed people to um increase their size range i think um it was it was good whether you know not necessarily all the means were exactly the most the best experience but um it's been done now and then you know when you see people who make the effort if it's like the testers or the first samplers to really make sure they've got a good broad size range and that's not just so that they've got promo pictures whether people choose not to 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 put those up or not it's up to them but um it's very um, I kind of do like it when they've kind of you know thought about it and people are happy with it to the to, to the point that they've um, put up. Like I must admit, I actually need to do it because I tested the Rochester in the um, expanded size range for Maven, and I keep meaning to put the fact because they really released the expanded size range yesterday, and I'm like, yeah, I actually need to put up the photos from that, so I actually need to to do what I. I'm, I look forward to others doing and doing that because it was such a pleasure to show. So, and it's something I felt really happy in and I was like, yeah, we need to get that put up. So, 
yeah, I do need to get around to that. Try and post that tonight. Yeah. Um, so let us know in the comments if you've got any more questions for Loratu. Um, I just want to ask, because uh, you mentioned about your blocks and how you use them for fitting. So how did you draft your blocks? Did you go to like a class or anything or did you do them from a book or something at home? So the first time I did it, I used, so because I used to um, subscribe to class, Craftsy or Blueprint or whatever they call themselves now. And there's... Um, a great pattern drafting class there called by Susie Fur and it, she, she there's like three one for the the bodice one for trousers one for um skirt and then the most recent one I've used the Winifred Aldrich books to draft it but mm -hmm. it's all a, a, a basically the same process and the blocks are like it's pretty much the same process both ways um but yeah it's been very um it's been really good to, to do that and just kind of really understand your own shape and and um, the how it sort of comes together and where particular things are, are meant to be depending on the garment. And then those Winifred Audric books is quite good because then it gets into a bit of, you know, how you then take that block and manipulate it to get to the, um, to get to the so it's like one of those things i probably could drop like again you could draft the things but i'm just too lazy it's just too lazy i just want to cut and sew but they're amazing um that winifred audrey book is, is, is a really good book um to kind of go through and start if you're really into pattern drafting that was studio 77 was yeah, like yeah, the yeah i love that book but 77 as well um yeah so try and, and test it one as well that she, um, you know, for any men out there who are, um, don't want to be left out, but yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining us on Stuff Chats this evening, Loratu. It was so great to talk to you. Um, thank you. So tomorrow we're going to be by Jen. Yeah. So thank we got you. Jen about her amazing inventions. So yeah, I'll be back at 7 Sorry, what I was going to say, the bits of stuff that we always, th that we never know we needed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Emma says that they taught the, they taught them to use the Winifred Aldrich books at the London College of Fashion. So Ooh. you've got a, we've got professional yeah, standards yeah. there. So that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to, if you didn't manage to catch the whole episode, I'm going to, YouTube now so we're just stash hub on YouTube and then I'm back tomorrow with Jen to talk about all the inventions we knew we needed and then on Friday I'm talking to Matthew from this year's series so hopefully you can join in with those lives and yeah thank you so much to everyone who joined and watched and thank you again Lorati lovely to chat to you thank you bye